Hello and welcome to a special Neighborhood Nature four-part series featuring our guest botanist Tabea. In the third part, which is this one, we are going to be focusing on lichen. And you can find all four episodes as well as all of our Neighborhood Nature episodes on our YouTube page. So Tabea, let's talk about lichen. Yeah, so lichen is a really weird organism. Um, it's actually a symbiotic organism between, as a symbiosis between a fungus and an algae, usually. Um, and so the uh, actual lichen that you will see, the kind of body form, is formed by the hyphae or the cells of the fungus. And then the color um, is sometimes formed by pigments, but also by the algae that are living kind of in between the sandwich of um, fungal cells. And the algae will uh, photosynthesize and produce sugars for the fungus. And then the fungus will produ uh, provide a house for the algae. Um, and they often have, uh, more recent research has suggested that they also have a third partner usually in the form of the yeast, which is a single celled fungus, uh, like something that you do like yeast for your bread. Um, and then, so they come in lots of different forms. Um, the different body forms are, have different names. Um, sometimes when they're flat with um, kind of mm, leaf-like structures, they're called mm -hmm. um, like thalluses or thalloids or also fructose. Nope, folios. Folios is the flat one. Uh, fructose is when they kind of stick upright and have um, almost little like tree-like or branch-like protrusions. Um, and then they can also grow flat on rocks uh, called um, and they have really weird ways of reproducing. So sometimes they'll reproduce through spore packages. Um, and so if you see a lichen growing on a tree and it has little circles on it, those are the spore producing structures. Is that something we should worry about if you, if you find lichen on your tree? No, nope. uh, lichen is completely normal. It um, doesn't have a root system, so it doesn't penetrate the tree in any way or um, it's not parasitic, it doesn't feed off of it. Usually when you see lichen on a tree, it just means that the tree is older, um, and so lichen has had a chance to colonize that particular tree. Um, it's nothing harmful to us or anything. Um, they just kind of have their own niche and they do their own thing. And they come in so yeah. many different colors and varieties. I had no idea that there were that many and that they were so pretty. You just, you forget to look at it when you're out for a walk. You don't even really, you're just mm -hmm. passing by and you're too busy looking at other nature and you don't notice it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really, really recommend stopping and getting down on your hands and looking at the little things around you because you'd be amazed at what you find. Um, a really common lichen that you can find in the city is growing on tree trunks is called Xantho Mendoza. Um, it's uh, orangey greeny color um, and it's one of the ones that don't mind air pollution a lot. Um, a lot of lichen is really sensitive to air pollution, and so it's used as a bioindicator for um, air quality of different areas. A really good lichen for indicating good air quality is Loberia, Loberia pulmonaria, also known as tree lungwort. Um, you can find it in Alberta in kind of old growth forests, um, especially if you head up north towards the boreal forest. It'll be growing on a tree trunk, um, and it's huge. It can be bigger than my hand, um, and they're really beautiful. And yeah, they're uh, quite common in North America, but they're really rare in Europe because of the uh, persistent air pollution problems that they have there, and also deforestation. And another really common one that you can find, a lichen that you can find in around Edmonton is um, Cladonia. Um, that's a common genus that's also known as like ranger lichen, but the reindeer eat up north, um, but there are some species that grow here and they grow on um, decomposing logs. And so if you go for a walk in the River Valley in Edmonton or out at River Lot 56, um, you can see, if you kind of look closely, there'll be a dense mat and then these little tiny um, structures poking up. Um, and that's how you'll know you found a quadonia. When you're out for a walk, you should be looking on the trees, looking on rocks, and then looking on dead uh, wood to find lichen. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. Because lichen and moss don't have a root system, they can grow anywhere basically. Very as long cool. As they get enough moisture. If they don't have roots, then how do they eat things? Uh, they mostly absorb all their nutrients from the surrounding air. 
Um, and so that's why moth and lichen tend to be very, like I said, very sensitive to air pollutants. Um, they will also take up nutrients from um, like rainwater or any water that kind of drips onto them. Um, and so a lot of the times they have very specific habitats that they prefer just because um, only those habitats will provide them with the nutrients and the sunlight availability and the moisture uh, that they require. That's, yeah. that's amazing. I, I had no idea that, that lichen were that diverse. That's fantastic. Uh-huh. If you see a lichen, um, there's a really common one called Old Man's Beard, I think. That's I've heard of that. Um, yeah, and it absolutely covers old dead trees. Um, and it can hang down really long, and it's um, an, a genus name for it is Usnia. And the color green is very common for lichens, um, and that color green is called, caused by something called Usnic acid. And so that color green has been named Usnic green. And I just think that's a, such a neat thing. So if you see that color green, um, you, you can name it because you know what it is. Neat. That's great. Mm-hmm. Thank you again to Bea for being a guest on Neighborhood Nature. And we have one more episode to go with you. The next one will be part four, which we will look at moss.